Hello there, my name is Tumisane. Welcome to our lesson on exponents. In our previous lessons, we found out how to multiply and divide numbers with exponents. We also looked at zero and negative exponents. Now we need to look at the next law, that of raising a power to another power. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to calculate a power raised to a power. I'm sure you remember what a power is. Here's an example of a power. We can say 2 is raised to the power of 3. But if you raise this power to another power, it looks like this. Can you see why we say we raise a power to a power? But what is the value of 2 to the power 3 all to the power 4? Let's work it out. This means we have 2 to the power 3 multiplied by 2 to the power of 3 multiplied by 2 to the power of 3 multiplied by 2 to the power of 3 four times. Apply our first law. We said if we are multiplying and the bases are the same, what do we do? We add the exponents. Therefore, we'll have 2 to the power 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 four times. Add that, we'll have 2 to the power of 3, 6, 9, 12. To be 2 to the power of 12. Can you see a shortcut to this answer? What did we do with the exponents? Aha! We multiplied them. Do you think this will work, for example, with variables? Let's find out. Look at this example a to the power 2, b to the power 4, all to the power of 3. Let's expand. It will be a to the power 2, b to the power 4, multiplied by a to the power 2, b to the power 4, multiplied by a to the power 2, b to the power 4, three times. Put the bases that are the same together. We'll have a to the power 2 times a to the power of 2 multiplied by a to the power of 2 multiplied by b to the power of 4 times b to the power of 4 times b to the power of 4. Now this will give us, remember your first law, bases are the same, so we simply add the exponents. So we'll have a to the power of 2 plus 2 plus 2, which will give us 6, multiplied by b to the power of 4 plus 4 plus 4, which gives us 12. Right, look at the answer we found. Can you suggest a shortcut for getting from the question to the answer of a to the power 6, b to the power of 12? Can you see that each power in the brackets is raised to the power outside the brackets. We are ready to make this generalization. When we raise a power to a power, we multiply the exponents. We could have done this example like this. a to the power 2 multiplied by 3 times b to the power 4 multiplied by 3. That will give us a to the power of 6 multiplied by b to the power of 12. We can make a general rule about this. Here it is. a to the power m all to the power of n equals to a to the power of mn. What will happen if we use powers in fraction form and raise these to a power? Well, let's work one out. Here we give an x to the power of 5 divided by y to the power of 4. 
all to the power of 4. This will be the same as x to the power 5 over y to the power 4 multiplied by x to the power 5 over y to the power 4 multiplied by x to the power 5 over y to the power 4 multiplied by x to the power 5 over y to the power 4 four times. Now that will be the same as x to the power 5 multiplied by x to the power 5 multiplied by x to the power 5 multiplied by x to the power 5 four times divided by y to the power 4 times y to the power 4 times y to the power 4 times y to the power 4 four times. Use your first law. The bases are the same, so we simply add the exponents. So that will be x to the power of 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 gives us x to the power of 20 divided by y to the power of 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, which is y to the power of 16. Can you see that each power in the brackets is raised to the power outside the bracket? 5 times 4 gave us 20. 4 times 4 gave us 16. This is the same as in the previous example. So when we raise a power to a power, we multiply the exponents. So what do you think will be the general form of our rule? a to the power m divided by b to the power n all to the power of x. You should have found that the answer will be a to the power of mx divided by b to the power of nx. That was easy enough, but now I need to warn you about something that people often get confused about. Look at these two expressions. We're given a, b, all to the power of 2, whereas the second one is a plus b, all to the power of 2. Can you see the difference between them? The first one has two factors multiplied together, whereas the second one has two terms being added together. Can they be simplified? Does the general rule that we just discovered help us? Let's see. The first one, if you want to, we can give this a power of 1 and b a power of 1. So if you apply our general rule, that will mean that we have 2 times 1, which will give us a to the power of 2. 2 times 1, that will give us b to the power of 2. Whereas the second one is different to that one. This implies that we have a plus b, a plus b, multiplying themselves. Now what do we have? Apply your laws of distri uh, the distributive law. We multiply a times a, which will give us a squared. a times b, which will give us a b. b times a gives us a b. b and b will give us b squared. Put these two, since they are like terms, that will give us a squared plus 2 ab plus b squared. Let's do the same example using negative exponents. Here are the two expressions. We're given ab all to the power of minus 2 and a plus b all to the power of minus 2. Let's simplify them. Remember one of our definitions? We said we can write anything to the negative power as a positive exponent, but it should be 1 over our number. So in this case, it will be 1 over ab to the power 2, which, of which we can write it as 1 over a squared b squared. Apply the same law again in the second one. That will be the same as 1 over a plus b all to the power of 2, which will be the same as 1 over a plus b multiplied by a plus b. 
which will give us 1 over a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now you'll be ready for a challenge. Let's take a problem that uses all our exponents knowledge so far. Simplify 2 to the power m plus 1 raised to the power 2 multiplied by 2 to the power m plus 3 all divided by 2 to the power 3m plus 2. Remember the order. First, raise to a power, then do the multiplication, which is adding your exponents. Lastly, do the division, which is subtracting the exponents. Let us first examine the expression carefully. We have 2 to the power m plus 1 raised to the power 2. So let's do that first. That will give us 2 to the power 2m plus 2. Then we have a multiplication. That means we multiply 2 to the m plus 3 divided by 2 to the power 3m plus 2. Now let's look at this. All the bases are the same. So that means we can apply our first law there where it says if we're multiplying, we can simply add the exponents. That will give us 2 to the power of 3m, that will be m plus 2m, plus 2 plus 3, 5, divided by 2 to the power 3m plus 2. Right, so far so good. Let's see now. What do we have here? It's division. Remember our second law? Law of division. It said when we're dividing, we can subtract the exponents. That's right. Let's see how we can do this now. We'll have 2 to the power 3m plus 5. What do we take away? We take away 3m and we take away the 2. That will give us 2 to the power of 3m, take away 3m, that will give us 0. 5, take away 2, it gives us 3. 3 plus, uh, plus 0 will give us 3. That means our answer will be equals to 8. We've covered a lot of work today. Let's see if you can complete the task using all the laws that you've learned so far. Simplify 4 to the power n multiplied by 2 to the power n plus 1 all divided by 2 to the power 3n minus 2. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson. See you next time. Salani Bye-bye.